The Pharisees want to know when the kingdom of God will come. Jesus tells them that it is among you already. Every morning when I get up, I, I kneel down by my bed and I have a few prayers that I say, not official like the breather, but a few prayers that I just say. And one of them, <clears throat> it's a passage from Romano Guardini's book, The Lord. It, it says that the will of God is the love of God and that Jesus, by uniting himself to it completely, becomes luminous in the Lord. And, and I like that. Sometimes when, when bad things happen, people say, well, it's God's will. And, and it sounds like a terrible thing. Uh, but if we understand that God loves us, then these difficult things, they're not some kind of an arbitrary whim on God's part, but he is sharing with us in his passion. St. Paul, in our first reading, he speaks to Philemon as a partner, all right? <clears throat> not as someone who is a slave. And where did St. Paul learn this pattern? But of course, from God. So what does St. Paul say to Philemon? He says, I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love. So in other words, by Philemon's example of love, he has lifted up the heart of St. Paul. He's given him encouragement in his imprisonment. He's given him joy in the midst of his sorrow. But then he says, because the hearts of the holy ones have been refreshed by you, brother. This refreshed, this is a wonderful expression. In, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter tells the crowd that they need to repent of their sins and following their repentance, there will come times of refreshment. Isn't that great? God wants us to receive these times of refreshment. And, and when Philemon is acting in love, he actually brings that refreshment to other people. St. Paul points out that he has the full right in Christ to order Philemon what to do. So he has the right, but he doesn't use it because he doesn't want Philemon to act out of coercion. He doesn't want him to, to be forced. Rather, he wants him to respond with his whole heart. That's how we love. You cannot force someone to love you. So St. Paul does not order him to do this, but rather he urges him out of love. When we do that, <clears throat> then we acknowledge that the other person is an equal or we lift them up. He tells him that uh, he wants him to take back Onesimus, his slave. Uh, but he says, I do not want, I do not want to do anything without your consent so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. St. Paul does uh, great Jewish mother fashion here, you know. He says, I could force you to do this, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to urge you. Later on, he says, uh, may I not tell you that you owe me your very self. Uh, he just told him that, all right? Again, wonderful Jewish mother. We all need Jewish mothers. Um, May I not tell you that you owe me your very self? He's reminding him of this, but he's not forcing him because he wants uh, Philemon 
to respond out of love, freely choosing this. It's good for us to remember, especially when we're at Mass. God showers his graces down upon us. He is rich in grace. He's rich in mercy. But we only receive what we freely choose to receive. We only receive if we consent to the action or when we cooperate with God's will, with God's love. In uh, the family-based religious ed program, we're, we're talking about uh, the real presence in the Eucharist. The real presence of Jesus is in us only to the extent that we ask, only to the extent that we cooperate, only with our consent, only if we voluntarily choose this. When we do this, though, God showers his blessings on us <clears throat> and the last thing that uh, St. Paul says in our reading is, refresh my heart in Christ. In other words, by your actions, you can refresh my heart. That is so beautiful for us. We can refresh the hearts of other people when we act out of love when we give our consent, when we voluntarily choose to unite ourselves with the will of God, with the love of God.